Hello, and welcome to our series on acute stroke and perfusion imaging. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of VRAD, or Virtual Radiologic. We're on to Section 2 of our series, which will focus on case presentations, specifically cases of ischemic events as visualized on CT perfusion imaging. Our first case is about the most subtle that you will see on CT perfusion. In fact, I doubt that analytic software would even identify this according to uh, the thresholds that it applies. You can see there is a small region of abnormality there in the right frontal parietal area. It's only showing up on the Tmax and TTP with the MTT, typically the least sensitive of these series, being relatively normal here. In addition, note the CBV and CBF, which typically will depict a core infarct, are normal too. So given that, I would call this simply ischemia and not a penumbra. Uh, again, there is no distinction between a core infarct and ischemic tissue in this particular case. So let's look at the cine images. The finding is subtle, though it is present on more than just the one cut. So that is a case of right frontoparietal ischemia. Let's move on to a left MCA penumbra. I like this case a lot because I don't think you would identify an abnormality on the CBV without the CBF. Now remember the CBF does trend across the line between ischemia and infarct and can overrepresent a core infarct and can be altered by the presence of ischemic tissue. So that's what we're looking at there with the CBF. But its abnormality will call your eye to that region and allow you to identify that abnormal uh, perfusion in the left putamen that I think we can identify there on the CBV. Then note on the Tmax and MTT, there's a very large penumbra, clearly larger than the core infarct. So note on the CBV, that abnormal left putamen stands out, but only after you've identified the region on the CBF series. Right, so that is a left MCA ischemic event with a large penumbra. Next, we have a right MCA penumbra. Here is one of the unusual situations where the CBV is actually slightly more prominent than the CBF. On a few of the lower cuts, you'll see that's even more visually prominent. On the bottom row, we can see the Tmax and the TTP, again, are clearly abnormal and barely any abnormality in that MTT, which again is uh, typically the least sensitive. So here are the cine images on this. Remember, a little lower down, you can see the CBV and CBF are abnormal, but very subtly so, denoting a small core infarct. And there is a relatively large penumbra when you compare that region involved to the regions of abnormality on the Tmax and TTP. Again, that MTT, relatively insensitive, although depending on the types and degree of autoregulatory mechanisms that are in effect, it actually can, on occasion, uh, be the one with the most pronounced visual abnormality. So I am a fan of doing all three of those sequences. Let's move now to the left PCA penumbra. You see a nice core infarct there on the CBV and CBF on the top row. And on the CINES, you'll see that those regions of abnormality on the Tmax, and in this case the MTT, are much larger than the region of infarct. And you can see the CT uh, depicts very nicely that region of hypodensity. We even got a dense PCA vessel there, as denoted on the CT. So again, note the CBV and CBF show very nicely that region of infarct, 
and then higher up, you still see persistent abnormality in the Tmax and MTT, suggesting the presence of a small to moderate salvageable penumbra. All right, let's move on to a cerebellar infarct. Here we see matching abnormalities of the left cerebellar hemisphere on the CBV and CBF, but also on the Tmax and TTP. The TTP may suggest a little added uh, region, uh, suggesting a smallish penumbra, but I think taken in total, this is probably infarcted with relatively little salvageable tissue. So that is a left cerebellar hemisphere infarct. Now we'll have a few cases with CTA correlation. You can see this is an occluded proximal right MCA and actually right carotid when you reference the CTA. And there is such a decrease in right hemispheric circulation that there is uh, an obvious corresponding decrease or even absence of venous outflow from that hemisphere. So a pretty striking case. We'll see what that looks like then on CT perfusion. So there is an abnormality on the CBV and the CBF denoting a core infarct, but there is a much larger region of ischemic change seen on the Tmax and TTP and even to some extent on the MTT. So the CINE images do a great job of showing both that core infarct and the marked disproportionate ischemic change throughout that right hemisphere. And that's all a very large penumbra. We'll move on now to a case of left M2 segment ischemia the nice CTA correlation. On the far left, you'll see the non-contrast head CT with a focal hypodensity in the insular cortex. In the middle, that M2 segment of the left MCA appears to just narrow right there. But on the far left, on the coronal view, you can see that it definitely is a focal occlusion denoted by the red circle right there. You see it wink out and then reconstitute. So here is the perfusion imaging. This one also is in competition for the subtlest. In fact, I believe that TTP abnormality is the only one you'll see, and that's the only image on which it is depicted. This is one of the older type scans that have relatively limited anatomic region of scanning, and so they tended to be a lot more difficult to evaluate. So you can see there the TTP in that left frontal region is abnormal really on two slices and only very subtly so. So that's a case of left M2 ischemia. Next we have an M3 segment ischemic event with a penumbra. You can see the hypodensity in the cortex, the posterior right frontal region on the far left, the non-contrast head CT. On the axial, you'll see there are actually two regions of thromboembolic narrowing and occlusion there in the M3 segment of the right MCA. One more proximal and one more distal, that distal one being actually occlusive. So there's the narrowing, proximally, and then the occlusion, distally. Again, best seen on the right-sided coronal view. Right, here are the perfusion images. You can see the CBV and CBF depict a core infarct with a smallish penumbra denoted by the T-max. You can see the area of T-max abnormality is really much more than just that focal central portion that correlates to the CBV and CBF abnormalities. 
So I would call this a penumbra, and you can see that T max is more extensive than it initially appears to be. All right, that is a right M3 segment thromboembolism with penumbra. Our next case is a left anterior cerebral artery and left M3 segment occlusion causing ischemia without the evidence of a core infarct. So there you see the left ACA and the M3 segment of the left MCA winking out focal occlusions in each. And here are the corresponding perfusion images. Note the lack of a core infarct in the CBV and CBF. There's just no evidence of an infarct in either of them. Here we have the TTP that shows visually conspicuous ischemia in the respective distributions of both the ACA and MCA. And as we've come to expect, the relatively less sensitive MTT is showing some abnormality as well. That TTP is very helpful. Many of our neuroperfusion readers say that they go first to the perfusion map, and that oftentimes helps them find the abnormality on the CTA. I think the CTA abnormalities are pretty apparent as well, but clearly the perfusion would be a helpful guide in this case. Our next case is a left calcarine artery occlusion with a core infarct and penumbra. On the left, you can see the left occipital lobe hypodensity. Also, there's some involvement of the left thalamus. And on the right, a nice CTA right there showing the occlusion of that calcarine artery with later minimal reconstitution. And there it is. All right, let's look at the perfusion images. These are interesting for a couple reasons. The CBV is visually more apparent than the CBF. Typically, the CBF is a little more sensitive, but tends to overestimate the size of the core infarct. Not so in this case, where it really is only evidenced on the CBV and is pretty small in size. More striking visually are the Tmax and TTP. Those are typical elevations and in a region much larger than the core infarct, suggesting ischemic penumbra. The MTT, interestingly enough, is actually decreased, and you can see the MTT change variably depending on the extent and type of autoregulatory mechanisms that have kicked in at this point. So we'll look at the cines on this. Again, the CBV, relatively subtle, but present. The CBF, really no abnormality identifiable. Then we have a larger region of penumbra denoted on the TTP and Tmax. So an interesting case again because the CBV is the only one that shows any evidence of a core infarct, and that very subtly. And the MTT in this case is actually decreased, again most likely related to autoregulatory mechanisms. All right, let's look at a case now of cerebellar ischemia. This is related to bilateral vertebral artery dissections. There's a nice depiction of the left cerebellar hemisphere hypodensity on the left. And on the right, you can see the CTA, which shows irregular narrowing of both vertebral arteries in their distal portions just before the formation of the basilar. And here are the perfusion images. No evidence of a core infarct on the CBV or CBF. And note on these more modern versions of CT perfusion imaging, we do get a good look at that posterior fossa. All of that bottom row, our ischemic indicators, are all showing abnormal color in that region of the left cerebellar hemisphere. So comparing these, 
lends you to say this is ischemic with no core infarct. There is perhaps the smallest amount of abnormality in the CBF images, but I don't think it's enough to call. And again, we know the CBF tends to be a little bit hypersensitive and overestimate the presence of a core infarct a bit, especially compared to the CBV. So there is a nice case of left cerebellar ischemia. And that concludes the second portion of our series on CT perfusion. Join us for the third portion, which will focus on the CT perfusion appearance of non-ischemic pathologies. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, and thanks for watching.